No buzz. A Just Bees book club. Uh, this is this is the one that follows my uh, birthday. That like smoke like like previous was previous to it. This one's a, uh, after it, and it was. It turned out to be uh, very fortuitous because, as I said, like smoke like light was one of my one of my favorite books of the year. Um, Land of Milk and Honey by uh, C. Tom Jean. Uh, easily my favorite novel of this year. Um, they're just. Uh, um, I have no idea if this is going to be a, a long one or a short one, you know, we'll, we'll have, we'll have found out, I suppose, by the, by the time I hit, uh, stop record, but, um, on some level I feel like I could just say, you know, this, uh, this, this novel is sumptuous, uh, it is, every sentence is a, is a, is a delectable, little aperitif or a meal in itself. Um, I, what did I say? I think I put this on the, on the screen, but I here's my little blurb that I wrote for it. Um, and I wrote, this might be the most sumptuous novel I've ever read. Zhang's follow-up to How Much of These Hills is Gold cements her as one of the great stylists of English working. Nearly every sentence in this book is, breath, is striking. I almost said breathtaking, which is just editorializing myself, apparently. Um, I'm going to do my, my little summary. Uh, a chef in a world where something like 94% of all agriculture has been devastated by smog lies her way to a position as a head chef of an alpine retreat where the air is clear and a series of labs stalk the larder beyond imagination. The land of milk and honey's eloquence illuminates equally these places and feelings of fecundity and deprivation. The hollow lacks as lusciously described as the richest ple pleasures. And it's delightfully gay. I say nearly above because in spite of everything, I get the strong sense from this book that Zhang's magnum opus hasn't yet been written. I find that extremely exciting. Um, so yeah, um, Zhang's previous novel, uh, How, Much of the Hill, How Much of These Hills is Gold, is one of the, uh, the very few novels I have ever reread in my life, uh, which is, is wild. <laughs> considering it came out in 2019. Um, so it hasn't even been that long. I, I've, I've read it twice now. Um, Jean has an ability to, to craft sentences that are uh, things that I at least want to simply sit and luxuriate in. Um, and it's uh, especially special right now because I'm in this fucking project of reading Proust, um, uh, the writer whose sentence one, one would like to luxuriate in. Um, and... I don't know. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say she's. Uh, she's. You know. Fucking. Uh, going to. Uh, going to round ten with with Proust, but like, I think I might be kind of saying that. Um, I didn't. I didn't pull any specific quotes out of this book or anything like that. At some point, I'm just gonna flip over a page and start reading it because I. I genuinely believe of both how much of these hills is gold and the land of milk and honey. Um, which I should say, very obviously, I have a, an advanced reader copy here. Um, this is not the actual cover. This is not the actual book. They're going to do other stuff as well. Um, there's, there's, you know, whatever else, other copy editing and, and writing happens, um, or, or minor edits, presumably. Uh, pre presumably some sort of structural stuff also, considering, you know, there's, I mean, uh, it's not going to open with dear reader, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, which is a, it's a really nice little note actually that that Jean opens the book with. I I, I read kind of a lot of arcs and uh, or I, I did last year. I have been reading less this year, um, but in terms of just like how this thing is put together is very funny because yeah, it's just they didn't do the thing that they often do, which is like do a mock up of the cover, um, which often looks truly bad. Um, I really appreciate that this is a fucking white book that just. Uh, you know, very simply packaged. It's got the stuff that it needs to have, and it's got the the words in it, which are the thing that I um, r really, 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 really like. <laughs> um, um, wait, uh, what's my inventory? Um, I've been sort of like choosing a best book I've read ever since I started working at a bookstore, which was in 2019. Uh, I started working in December of 2019, so I, I, I don't count that one. Um, so this is the third of those picks. So the first one would have been Mexican Gothic, uh, by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Still, still an all-timer. Absolutely. Like, a book I think about constantly. 
Um, what was 2021? Oh, shit. That was something really good in 2021. Um, I'm 90% sure Sorrowland was 2022. Another book that I think is, um, maybe that was 2021. Shit, I'm missing one of the years. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, anyway, in terms of like recent fiction, um, this is up there for me with, you know, Marina Garcia's Mexican Gothic, with River Solomon's Sorrowland, a book I um, openly wept at. I think I probably mentioned that in the, in the Faultus episode. That was the other one that like got me to cry <laughs> into a into an open drink, um, an experience I've had exactly twice, and it was with those two books. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is in, this is in rarefied territory. In my heart, I, it's very silly of me to say like, oh, it's in the rarefied territory of the the some of my favorite books of the last three years when I just literally compared it favor favorably to fucking Marcel. Um, I am I am. I am heaping praise on this book because I really, really quite like it. Um, but yeah, I, I, so I didn't read How Much of These Hills is Gold until after 2019 when it came out. So it, was, it wasn't my favorite novel of 2019 for literally just that reason. I have read it twice since. Um, that book is about um, two young siblings in 19th century America um, and their quest to sort of bury their father um, in, a, in just a very, very broad sense. Um, this book, and I sort of read my description, let me read, let me read the one on the back of this arc also. Um, After a spreading smog leads to a food shortage, a talented chef escapes to a mountaintop community of the uber-rich. Here the air is cleansed. Meals are decadent. She emerges from years of bleakness to fall in love again with color, touch, taste, and desire. As boundaries undergo a thrilling erosion, the chef's enigmatic employer and his visionary daughter draw the chef into a startling attempt to reimagine the world. Soon the chef must weigh the meaning of her choices beyond the plate. Um, that's that's the at least the uh, the sort of plot description, um, the hooky bit of of the back of the book. Um, when I saw this book come in, when I saw this art come in, um, I, I explicitly was just like, oh. Um, for me, this is uh, this is this is for me. This is like a, this is a this is the most B book I've ever heard described, and it also happens to be by an author who I think is one of the greatest pro stylists working in English right now. Um, uh oh, I'm gonna have a lot of a lot of feelings about this book. Um, I was gonna say one way or another, but I'm pretty sure it would be one way. It, it could have it could have absolutely gone another, but it didn't. I really 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 like it. Um, you know, I, I am not a, I'm not a foodie, but I do love, I do love cooking and I do love descriptions of food and literature because of that love of cooking. Um, I'm not a chef, obviously. Um, I don't work at a bookstore. <laughs> um, I have a, a deep, deep love of science fiction as is probably somewhat evident here um for only for only bees of course it's only bees who watch this it's probably fairly evident based on you know what i what i read and therefore cover on uh, on this just bees book club and um and so when you're telling me that your book is going to be a sort of like exploration of of cooking that takes place in a near future dystopian setting i'm not a huge fan of dystopias to, to be clear also um and and, I, and you know this does I, w I would say this does lean dystopian more than um, other things but like the short pitch of this book is like what if monique trong's uh, a taste of salt but cyberpunk I've read almost every Greg Bear book. I've read almost every Bruce Sterling book. Um, I have extremely strong feelings about Neil uh, <laughs> Neil uh, Neil Stevenson's uh, novels, uh, which I've only read like four or five of. But but I I would uh, I would I would make the case that there are very interesting things about Snow Crash, but that not 
that it's uh, a lesser book than some people think, and actually that Diamond Age is is far and away his strongest work, um, which I can't actually make that case because you know I you know I haven't read fucking Cryptonomicon or Seven Eves or whatever the fuck. So like the things that like people who are like Neil Stevenson heads really fuck with, I'm not on that level. I'm on the I'm on the middle level. Um, you know, I've read almost everything by Greg Bear almost exclusively because he was included in the Mirror Shades anthology, which I read for a class and got so obsessed with. Um, God, I think I reviewed a fucking Bruce Sterling book for Strange Horizons a million years ago. Um, his like Pirate Utopia book. I don't remember what it was called. I mean, it might have been called that. It's the same of a David Graeber book that's out right now, but um, it was something along those lines. Um, it's like his novel about, um, oh God, what is the name? The the Italian sort of free state that was like an anarchist, like was a sort of an, an attempt at an anarchist state or like a, a territory that also happened to be like where Mussolini got his politics on some level. Um, uh, Pirate Enlightenment, maybe? Or is that the great book? Whatever. Um, all to say. I love I love cyberpunk and I love food and I love pe people in literature talking about food um, and like among the best of that is 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 Money Trung's A Taste of Salt a book I should probably reread I did reread that that's another one of those that's another one that I actually have reread and I did it not that long ago um, that one I reread because when I first read it I basically didn't know how to cook at all and then I reread it um, after getting the job mostly to just be like you know I remember this being a, a book a about food in a way that I kind of ignored because it wasn't like a huge thing for me at the time. Like I just didn't think about food. Um, I still have problems about thinking about food sometimes. Um, but now that I've, you know, I have, I have done some work. I have, I have become a very capable cook um, who, who, who loves to experiment also. I was like, I wonder how much the language in that regard can, holds up um, with respect to the book, and, and it turns out, for me at least, it, it absolutely did. Um, that book does uh, some some wonderful things with salt, <laughs> let's say. Um, also very gay. Lovely. Um, I, also, oof, I was, whew, it's so long ago that I read that book, I forgot that, like, the other part of it was, I was like, oh, okay. I didn't cook, and I was um, straight <laughs> um, when I first read that book, so. Uh, great book, great book. Um Land of Milk and Honey might be better, uh, which is baffling to say. I I cannot believe how in love with this book, sentence by sentence, I was every time I picked it up. Um, I just I just cared about reading it more than anything which is like my favorite feeling in the world. And everyone I talked to about it was not interested at all, and that's fine. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a poetry person. I love prose. So when people say like, oh, the, the writing is, is deeply poetic, I go, okay, what, is, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, and I think, you know, lyrical is, the, is sort of the other um, way this gets talked about. Um, the writing here is absolutely lyrical, but I think it's a, it's a, a extremely beautiful prose writing that happens, like, again, nearly every sentence. And again, like I said from my blurb thing, like, I think she's going to write a better novel than this, and I'm kind of fucked up about it. I'm kind of like, how do you... How do you present a thing to me, to me personally, that is kind of the summation of everything I care about in literature, right? It is the, you know, the setting is a, is a, is a genre of familiarity I have that I think, I think is done extremely well. Um, I think she sort of picks out the, like, details of this sort of near future dystopia, this sort of like high low, uh, you know, high, <laughs> high tech low life, as they, as they say in cyberpunk, as they did um, in the movement, um, as Chairman Bruce once said. Uh, I think she picks out 
those themes and, and runs with them really beautifully. Um, I think she elaborates on them in ways that the core cyberpunk writers never touched, um, especially with regards to things like, um, I mean, just straight up like depression <laughs> and uh, displacement and dissociation. Um, and and marries that with one of my favorite books of all time, which is because of the like uh, the deep association with with food that I have come to develop, um, and and frankly, um, the, uh, <laughs> this unnamed narrator is like relatable to me in that way, which is the wildest shit in the world. Um, because for for good chunks of this book, I'm going to be talking specifics about this book. For good chunks of this book, she is um, just completely unable to eat the food that she makes um, for reasons that are that are are sort of tugged at that for like threads that are pulled here and there, but like there's never a and therefore I was X and so and so I could not eat Y or whatever. Um, there is um, there is a life world happening behind this narrator's. Uh, uh, talking that I think is, um, I guess, relatable. A word I never say that I truly don't find interesting at all, like at all. Um, I don't want. I don't want to relate to anyone. I don't want. I don't. I, I just don't. Um, and uh, and it did it in a way that I actually can stomach, which is even even wilder, which is to say. I didn't go, oh, wow, how relatable. And I didn't go, oh, fucking relatable book. I went, oh, shit, yeah, yeah, that's, um, that just makes sense to me. It was fundamentally the, the way you have feelings about cooking and eating and how those are sort of extremely differentiated <laughs> um, uh, in, in, your, in your brain and in your life, it, that it just fundamentally makes sense to me as a human being. Um, and, and I also understand the ways in which that is like, uh, those disconnects are products of things and productive of other things. And I think the book gets into all of that very well. Um, I, I yeah, I, oof. <sighs> um, I love how like kind of low-key reprehensible literally everyone in the book is. Um, I love how, like, if, if there's a single moment of just, like, no, okay. Um, I want to talk about the ending very briefly. I'm going to talk about the ending very briefly. The one thing that I ended up being very conflicted about while reading this book was the ending. Um, because as I was reading it, mostly what I was thinking about was like, damn, another, damn, another good son? I'm not, what? Come on. Got We gotta have a clunker in here. Come on. We gotta have a clunker in here somewhere. That's impossible. You can't do this. You can't do this. Um, but like sort of because as 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 bees know who are the only people watching this my approach to literature is primarily you know i want i want word to be pretty and i want structure to be interesting and structurally i was kind of struggling by the end of the novel because i think it kind of it goes different places but it doesn't quite it doesn't quite move in the rhythm that I thought the sentence is called for. And I'm being very vague here. Um, I guess pay me to write about it <laughs> if you want more developed thoughts. Um, you're, you're a bee also, so you, I guess bees pays bees. Bees pays bees. Um, some of the directions that it went, I, I don't think ever failed for me but there was def there were there were moments and this is i guess relating back to what i'm saying in terms of like the there is i am excited for jong's third fourth fifth novel um because i think there's things structurally happening here that like aren't bad 
but aren't like pitched so perfectly that it's impossible to think of them as having been done better. Um, which is not what I'm interested in, like at a fundamental level in terms of reading. Like that's not that's like a very secondary thing to me. Um, but like, there are moments in terms of just like the structure of the story, especially toward the end, where she made moves that felt a little a little less committed to what I saw the project as being, at least, which is to say a project of, of this, like, really, really lush, sensuous, as I said, sumptuous sort of, like, approach to life and how that is sort of imbricated in, uh, in all kinds of things, um, but especially in appetites, in, in bodies, in desire. Um, and in, in power, obviously. Uh, you don't say uber-rich on the back of this book without having at least some amount of analysis of power, right? And I don't think I would have anything near a, uh, I mean, at least power, right? Um, I don't think I have anywhere near the, like, level of, of love I have for this book if it had, like, if it had fucked that up. And this is also why I'm saying, like, they're, 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 many of these people, all of these people are on some level completely reprehensible. Um, they serve... Um, mammoth meat at some at a, at a certain point in the book like that's kind of the level like they they bioengineer mammoth to serve to these hyper rich people um that's like that's a thing that happens in this book um but i think that like the totalizing product the idea of um this this the way that the the chosen themes mesh with the aesthetic ha, ha it hits some road bumps with a couple of choices at, uh, near the end that ultimately I like am happy the story was told the way it was. I think I think it all works together, but it isn't unimpeachable in the way that I think so much of the rest of this is that I um, I got I came away my, marginally disappointed, I guess in that in that moment. And by disappointed, I of course mean really, really excited again for Zhang's third fourth fifth book and and like cannot wait to read everything else she writes going forward <laughs> um and now i'm going to do a thing where i turn to a random page and, and read a bit to see if i if i prove myself wrong random page Uh, my employer was monitoring a different sort of loss. One day he presented me with a new chart, on one axis height, on another, on the other weight. Oh Jesus, okay. I mean, yeah, whatever. This is, this is gonna spoil a very big thing. He tapped a tiny area labeled Yunyang, Unyang, between a body mass index of 18 and 19. I warned you to mind your health. At my height, the acceptable weight range, <laughs> the acceptable weight fell in a range of about two kilos. I assured him I was doing great. The night before, a British car manufacturer had examined my face with a dis disturbing skepticism, only to declare my nose job exquisite. Koreans had the best, best plastic. <laughs> Koreans had the best plastic surgeons, she said. It's a joke, I explained when he failed to smile. Yun Young did not display so alarming a sense of humor. In order to prioritize my conversion into a more ideal Yun Yang, my employer called my kitchen duties to a halt. Temporarily, he said. That word reignited the old fear. And so I sprinkled my food with whey powder and swallowed capsules of fish oil. Without kitchen duties to distract, the images came more insistent than ever. My throat clogged with visions of grim restaurants, food deserts, Sunday smog reports, border patrols, a farmer's dead sheep, my mother picking it clean the carcass of a Thanksgiving turkey. Her expression over the bird she'd roasted with neither brine nor rub was severe. No joy, no anticipation of delight, only work. Work. It was that expression I saw in my reflection when I emptied myself of Yun Yang. My mother, who broke her fast on stale cereal and the non-moldy bits of moldy fruit, 
my mother who f refused to eat my cooking, my mother who mocked my profession, my mother who I mocked back for her dourness and narrow life of toil that I vowed to escape, my mother for whom food was sustenance and never joy, my mother who never knew pleasure. It was she I feared emerging from that glass as I found it harder and harder to eat. I can now see that I was hungry for love that summer, for something to love, a bite, a dream, a person, a meal, a field, a piece of world worth believing in. Not for me the solace of beef bourguignon, not for me wed, red wine or browned butter, that unctuousness so proximate to rot or, or burning that sticky diners' tongues. I had lived too long in the low country, I had tasted bitter grey. Only ashes and lost empires in the crust of a Queen Amon could, would, that would never shatter the same way again. Uh, yeah, I'll just finish this bit. The cat sniffed. He, too, refused my plate. As he stalked away, I was reminded of the lion in the lab and the tawny rise and fall of its flank. The lion had been extinct for two years in Africa. This country had brought it back. Surely the creature was correct. Surely its continued existence was the crucible in which I might gather the remnants of my faith like broken glass until I had enough to, sm until I had enough to smelt anew to forge something small but smooth. I pictured the passion on Ada's face as she spoke of biodiversity and de-extinction, methods unlike the echoes I evoked through mammoth and time-worn stews, methods not to recall or renew. The gleam of the lion's hide was that of the fine fur on Ada's forearms as she steered the cat through the light on the, in the hour just before sunset. I thought of her hunched over the plate, more fluent in her pleasure than her father for all his rhetoric, data, charts. Yin Yang was not flesh. She did not eat. But Ada did. I thought of her as I swallowed, chewed. I don't know if you like that. I did. Thanks for not watching. <laughs>